Okay, the last dental injury we are gonna discuss for permanent teeth is the avulsion. This injury is very easy to diagnose because the patient is missing a tooth or possibly multiple teeth. You don't need to pulp test the avulsed tooth, but make sure that you cold test any other teeth in the area of the injury. For radiographs, take an occlusal or periapical radiograph. Why? Well, the tooth could have been intruded. Uh, I haven't seen this personally, but there are case reports of teeth being intruded so far that it looks like the tooth has been avulsed. So always take a radiograph to rule out any other types of injuries. Two things or rules, dare I say, that I hope you've learned by now is that every trauma case should have pulp tests performed and radiographs taken as part of the examination and workup. All right, treatment for an avulsion depends on what you have discovered in your diagnosis. There are two important things to consider when treating avulsions, timeline and development of the tooth. Timeline becomes an important consideration for treatment because it relates to the viability or the life of the PDL cells. If PDL cells are dried out or necrotic, there will be a higher likelihood of healing complications such as resorption or ankylosis over time. Critical times to consider are when the teeth have been dried out of the mouth for only seconds to minutes as seen with immediate reimplantations or being out of the mouth for less than 60 minutes or out of the mouth for greater than 60 minutes. As you will see shortly, this affects the treatment approach. The other important thing to consider is development of the tooth or the maturity of the tooth, meaning is the root uh, fully formed with a closed apex or is the root of the tooth still developing with an open apex? As you have likely seen already, an open apex would indicate that the root is still forming and thus has a better chance of revascularization and preserved pulp vitality versus a closed apex where uh, it can frequently result in root canal therapy due to pulpal necrosis. Now before we dive into anything regarding treatment, you will see that in the guide there is a section that lists things that you should do immediately after the injury has occurred. The first thing is to make sure you determine if the tooth that has been avulsed is a permanent tooth or it's a primary tooth. Uh, we do not reimplant primary or baby teeth due to the risk of damaging the permanent tooth germ underneath the tissue, so make sure you know the difference. Second, try not to touch the root of the tooth as much as possible. It contains live, hopefully viable PDL cells that if preserved can improve the outcome and the prognosis of the tooth long term. So try not to touch the root. Third, if the tooth is at all dirty, wash it briefly under cold water prior to reinsertion into the socket. If the tooth cannot be reimplanted immediately after the injury, it is best to store the tooth in a storage medium such as milk, or saline. Uh, Hank's Balance storage solution is always recommended and considered an ideal storage medium. The only problem I see with that is most injuries that occur uh, always seem to occur in a location where this product is not likely on hand or accessible. Uh, this product actually sells for around $14 on Amazon and it really should be something that is on hand with any good first aid kit. As a dentist in your area, it may not be a bad idea to promote the importance of mouth guards and having Hank's Balance Salt Solution on hand at all the local sporting events. Uh, this could also be a good marketing tool for your practice, um, kind of as a side note as well, and what you do as a dentist. As a last resort, the tooth can also be transported in the mouth between the teeth and the cheek if necessary. Uh, this should likely only be recommended in older children or adults to minimize the risk of swallowing the tooth accidentally. Uh, the tooth should never, and I repeat never, be stored in water. Water contains no solutes and will cause the water to move from outside of the cell inwards, causing swelling of the cell and cell death. The last thing to consider is for the patient to get to a dental provider as soon as possible. Okay, now that we know what we should consider prior to treatment, let's look at the actual treatment once the patient has arrived at the dental office. This is where you will come in and really shine as a provider. Treatment is based first on open apex versus closed apex. How do you know? Well, you obviously need to look at the tooth. 
If the tooth has already been like reimplanted prior to the patient arriving at your office, a radiograph will help confirm an open or closed apex. Once you have identified if the tooth has an open or closed apex, your next step is to determine if the tooth has been reimplanted prior to arrival, and if not, how long has the tooth been out of the mouth? So you need to know, is it open apex or closed apex? And how long has the tooth been out of the mouth if it has not been already reimplanted? And not just how long it's been out of the mouth, but has it been stored in a suitable storage medium during this time out of the mouth? If the tooth with an open apex has been reimplanted prior to arrival at the dental office, your treatment consists of flexible splint for two weeks, uh, administering sy uh, systemic antibiotics for seven days, and also checking to make sure that the tetanus booster is up to date um, due to possible contact with soil or dirt. I'm not gonna go into all the details in this particular video, but refer to the Dental Trauma Guide for treatment, patient instructions, and follow-up. As mentioned earlier, pulp vitality has a better chance with open apex cases and should be monitored as part of the follow-up. If the tooth has been stored dry out of the mouth for less than 60 minutes, or it has been stored in any acceptable storage medium at all, then refer to that section in the handout for proper treatment. Some key features of this treatment are the recommendations of topical antibiotics if available. Uh, this could be a tough one for some offices, but it has been shown to enhance pulp vitality. Something to consider though. Um, you could always have some antibiotics in your office on hand and dilute them to one milligram per 20 milliliters as needed. After reimplantation, apply a flexible splint for two weeks and administer systemic antibiotics for seven days. Again, check for the need of a tetanus booster as well. Now, one thing to mention here is if the tooth has been stored in any acceptable storage medium, you follow that section's recommended treatment and instructions. Even if the tooth has been stored in an acceptable medium for longer than 60 seconds, you follow those instructions. Personally, if the medium is Hanks Balance Salt Solution, I feel a lot better about it being longer than 60 seconds versus say something like milk, saline, or in the cheek. Use your best judgment, but personally, if it is stored in milk, saline, or the cheek for longer than 60 seconds, I may lean more towards the third treatment option, which we'll discuss now. The third treatment option is the option for if the tooth has a dry time of longer than 60 minutes or there's any other reason to suggest non-viable cells. Any time replantation is delayed, the prognosis is poor and the likelihood of ankylosis and root resorption are increased. The treatment for these situations is to do a surface treatment with 2% fluoride solution for 20 minutes prior to replantation. After replantation, apply flexible splint for four weeks and administer systemic antibiotics for seven days. Again, check for the need for a tetanus booster. So everything we've discussed for treatment up to this point has been for an open apex in situations of immediate replantation, storage in a storage medium or dry time less than 60 minutes, and dry times greater than 60 minutes. What about for a closed apex? For a closed apex that has been replanted prior to arrival at your office, the treatment is gonna be the same as it was for an open apex, except that root canal therapy should be initiated within seven to 10 days after replantation. As part of this therapy, a two appointment approach with calcium hydroxide in the canal as a medication for up to four weeks is recommended prior to final operation. For a tooth with a closed apex and has been stored in an acceptable medium, or it has a dry time of less than 60 minutes, all the treatment is the same for open apex, except that the root canal therapy should be initiated within seven to 10 days after replantation. Again, as part of this therapy, a two appointment approach with calcium hydroxide used as a medication for up to four weeks is recommended prior to final operation. For a closed apex case where there has been a dry time of longer than 60 minutes, you may 
or can, I should say, do the root canal therapy prior to replantation or up to seven to 10 days later. Again, calcium hydroxide is still recommended as a medication for up to four weeks prior to final operation. All of the treatment is the same as for an open apex to include the recommendation of 2% sodium fluoride solution for 20 minutes prior to replantation. All right, I didn't go into every little detail for every possible step because you can easily read and find this information in the dental trauma guide. I basically just wanted to hit the highlights for the purpose of this video to aid in your learning and your understanding. In an emergency situation, the guide is there to help you make the right choices and you should read through it in detail during that emergency scenario.